basketball controversy that happened at the end of Monday night's Detroit loss to Seattle is still a hot topic, and Lions coach Jim Caldwell is instructing his players not to talk with the media about it. Here's what he said. I'm not going to tell them not to talk about it. We can't be hanging on something that happened a night ago that we can do nothing about. There's nothing we can do about it. Very true. Herm Edwards is still here with us. Do you like the way Jim Caldwell handled this controversy during and now after the game, Coach? Well, during the game, uh, I, I wish that, uh, obviously, he would have called the referee over there and said, hey, look, hey, that's not the correct call. I mean, that's not, can we look at this? Because this needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. I'm trying, in other words, I'm trying to help you guys out. Yeah. Because you, you, you have not made the correct call, okay? Yeah. So you need to look at this before you mm -hmm. decide what you're about to decide. Yep. And it, how would a guy's attention, however, if I'd had to walk down in the end zone, throw a red flag, do something, but say, hey, come on over here. Mm -hmm. That is not the correct call, okay? And advise the official, you're about to put yourself in a bad position. I'm trying to help you now as a head coach, mm -hmm. okay? Well, that didn't get done. And I think after the game, Jim handles the way you have to handle it because you're the head coach. I think going forward, uh, your football team, uh, you, you can't lay the loss on this because right now when you look at their numbers as a football team, they're not very good. No. Okay, they could have won this. Well, we could say, well, they'd have got the ball back. Maybe they'd have won the game. Mm -hmm. I get all that. But when you look at the numbers, Calvin Johnson has one touchdown. Golden Tate has zero. They're scoring 16 points a game. Their defense is not the defense they had last year. And I understand. Uh, Sue's gone. Sue's gone, yeah. and, and, and yep. Farley's gone, and uh, the linebacker is, is, you know, and he's hurt. Mm -hmm. and so I, I get all that. So I think if you're Jim going forward, the players can keep hanging on to this, but you can't let them hang on to it. you got to say this as a head coach. Jim's probably already told the players, hey, guys, this is on me. we got to get this thing fixed. we got a 12-game season. we we got to make a run at this. we still got a pretty good football team intact, but we got to find a way to win some games. And it starts with me and my coaching staff, and we're going to get it fixed. And you got to move on because this is a hard loss for them. There's no doubt about that. But the way it happened, it's it's a shame it's a because call. we're going to talk about mm -hmm. it. We know the officials were were not in position or to, to, to call it correctly, and I'm surprised the officials didn't huddle up and say, hey, look, let's get this thing right because this is wrong. But Jim could have brought it to their attention, knowing that I know the rules, and the rules say that you cannot bat the ball out of the end zone, period. And it's kind of ironic because in 2013, this happened with New England and San Diego. There was a batting uh, call by uh, in a game, mm -hmm. and then Seattle had one, believe it or not, against San Francisco, where they batted it out of bounds. Okay, and, but they're, they're batting it out of bounds, yeah. not through the end zone. Yes, but here's the deal. Yeah. What struck, my, what struck me right away when it happened, I said, well, that's a foul. But was even more mystical to me is like, you never teach a defensive player to bat a ball. No. You always go after the ball. Now, if you go after the ball and you miss it and it goes out of the end zone, it's one thing, but you fall on the ball when it's a fumble. Defensive players are taught to fall on the ball. Some of them will actually pick it up and run for a touchdown. I wonder who that was. Okay? Yeah. But you go for the ball. You don't never knock it out of bounds or try to knock it out of the end zone. You don't do that defensively. That's just my mindset. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always coached my teams that way. You go after the ball. You try to take the ball away from the offense. And when it's on the ground, go get the ball. The only people you ever see kick it out of the back of the end zone is a punter who yes, misses the he wants the safety. Or maybe yeah. a quarterback uh, the who loses the ball and, and just You take the safety. Take you say, hey, we'll take the safety. Okay, okay. whatever we gotta do. Real quick, it. anyway, they didn't know the rule. I don't know that. You gotta ask them that. I okay. don't know. I'm not gonna sit here and try right. to second guess coaches okay. and their staff. Stephen A. You play to win the <laughs> game. You. And I'm going to give you the that. jingle. <laughs> Hello. That's the jingle, know. Stephen. There you go, baby. You got it. You right. know, <laughs> don't press sin. Yes. All of, this, all of this stuff, Skip, that we point to, courtesy of our man, Coach Herm Edwards, mm -hmm. speaks to a vivacious, a demonstrative personality. Which Jim Caldwell could have used Monday night. <laughs> this is why I brought it up. Okay. Are you, can, skip, skip, skip. Forgive me for laughing, but I'm kind of imagining Herm Edwards, of all people, on the oh. sideline. Oh. And that play takes place in clear violation of the rule. And Herm Edwards just standing there like Joe Cool, like, what's going on? That ain't going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to get a foul. They're going to call a foul. Somebody, Stephen, because I'm going down some, to the end zone. Some, Something's going to happen, you know, and, and, and this is where so much was made of Jim Caldwell that it's not necessarily always a good thing. This is one of those instances, Skip, where 
dare I say, we would have preferred Jim Schwartz as the coach at that particular moment. Maybe. I'm not saying that he's not better for the Lions yep. because I definitely think that Jim Caldwell is better for them than he was. But I do think it's important to point out that a guy like Jim Schwartz would have been going ballistic. Yeah. He'd have been he'd have lost his mind. Okay. And that's what needs to happen from time to time. But in the end, to me, Skip, all of this is irrelevant. Coach, all of this is irrelevant. Here's why. When you look at the Detroit Lions, Coach threw out the biggest two, two statistics. And he needs to add a third. He said Calvin Johnson only had one touchdown. He's no longer he's no longer Megatron. We call him Calvin Johnson now. He said that uh, uh, Golden Tate doesn't have a touchdown. And the only thing he didn't add is that where's the running game? Because I don't see that either. No. Mm. So if you don't see a running game, and you can't see Megatron, and Golden Tate can't be Golden Tate because Megatron ain't Megatron. What's Matthew Stafford? Exactly what he looks like right now. And all of those things being considered. Skip Bayless, they got Arizona, Chicago, and Minnesota next on their home turf. Do you realize that if the Lions win two of three, they're still two and five? Mm. Yeah. This okay, the, so the, the, the let's quit over. talking about the this Lions. Season's this season's over. Stephen A. Smith, mm. I vehemently disagree that this is all irrelevant because the shrewd operator that you are on this show, you've done it again. You've gotten away with sweeping under the carpet what is relevant here. Your Seahawks should be one and three <laughs> heading to Cincinnati on Sunday. No gimme at Cincinnati, even though I think Seattle's right now a slight favorite, but I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to lean toward picking the Bengals in this game, but my point yeah. is it was a robbery. Once again, the NFL Robbery. looks awful. Yeah. Yeah, the Lions hey, hey, got robbed. Hey, Skip. That's what hey, happened. Skip. Skip. Hey, Skip. Hey, what? I understand, I understand <laughs> robberies are robberies. But that implies that the Seattle Seahawks are robbers. You ain't robbers unless you get caught. Oh, they didn't oh, get so caught. They got away and so as a result okay. of that, I mean, it right. is, as, as, excuse me, the record in the NFC West at this particular moment in time, says two and two. Undefeated since the return of Cam Chancellor. Yeah, that's what it says. <laughs> that's what I see. Needs a big that's what I see. Nah, 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 yeah. nah. I don't know. I mean, we saw a bad play, a missed call. Mm -hmm. We get all of that. But I saw a defense that basically shut Detroit down until that last drop. Oh, I saw oh, Cam wait, Chancellor wait, go wait, in there sweeping and under sweep the carpet, the 91 That's yards right. for a touchdown yeah. until that last drive. That was some drive. Shows. Stuff like that. Stuff like that happened. Stuff like that happened. Oh, hey, your man, Bra else. hey, your man, Brandon Whedon. Hold, hold on, your mm. man, Brandon Whedon, took yeah. the Dallas Cowboys about 90 yards on Sunday night. How'd the game end? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How'd the game end, Skip? Man? I mean, yeah, I mean I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying, well, well, what happened? Right, what happened? So let's now, get back now, to the Seahawks that you vaguely, picked to go to the vaguely. Super Bowl and win the yeah, Super Bowl, yeah, who stole yeah, that game. Yeah, and by the way, yeah. their head coach, before I get to Jim Caldwell, Pete Carroll had no idea what that rule was or is because he continued to talk about it yesterday as if hold, hold the, the back judge is saying, uh oh, you know, the back judge, it was a 50-50 call. It wasn't a 50-50 hey. call. It was hey. a 100% call. You hey. have to hey, throw hey, the flag. Hey, hey what? Hey, Skip Bayless. Do I get hey, to Skip talk Bayless. on this show ever? That, that, that's that's <laughs> ever? subject to interpretation. That's subject to interpretation. Oh. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's your interpretation. Yeah. I don't know that to be true. Maybe it was 50-50. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, know. oh okay. Now you're in their camp. Okay. <laughs> now, I don't now know. Let's, let's go back to what I thought should have been the headline of the day from the comments from Coach Caldwell. Coach Caldwell says that he saw the field judge, not the back judge, with his flag out in his hand, waving his flag like he was preparing to throw it or to at least alert his his compatriots on his ref crew, hey, hey, and Jim saw it. That's what he said. I saw him waving the flag. Jim also suggested that the back judge might not have even known the rule. And is that possible? It's possible. I brought it up yesterday. I also brought up the fact that given 
the the incredible volume of that 12th man crowd of theirs it could be a little intimidating for a rep and he might think about it and then hesitate just for a split second like do i really want to throw this flag to decide this game on this field in front of these folks it's just psychological they're all human you know this you've dealt with them for your whole life and so did he did he hold it just a second and then think no i can't do that but to your point if one guy, if the field judge is waving his flag, and, and Jim thought that they did have a quick conference. Remember, the world fixated on did Calvin Johnson break the plane. Right. That, that's where all the focus of that play went, right? Right. So everybody forgot about K.J. Wright did a little patty cake and just clearly, blatantly knocked the ball out of bounds. You can't say it's 50-50. It's 100%. He, if you want to say batted poked, whatever, whatever you want to say he did to the ball, he, he removed it from the playing field, field right. when it's incumbent upon him to, to have to control the ball in the end zone for a touchback. Because if he lets it bounce again and it goes sideways, Detroit might just fall on it for a touchdown, right? right. So that's why you cannot knock the ball out of bounds. Okay, so now I'm back to Jim Caldwell. If Herman Edwards sees one guy with his flag out waving it like this, Herman Edwards is running to the end zone. Oh, I'm going to get a foul. Like, I'm going to get a foul. You're going to get a foul, but you're going to, it might be a good foul because you might save the game for your Detroit Lions or whoever your team is. Well, are. I think you, you, what, you, what I've always tried to do, and, and, the, and the officials are in a tough spot. They are. I, I've always said this about officials. They never have a home game, okay? They never have a home game. And uh, they, they, got a tough, they got a tough job. We all have tough jobs, but I never try to put those guys in an embarrassing situation. I'd call a Head referee over there. Okay, hey, look, that's fine. Let's look that's at fine. this. All right. I said, but, Here, but, here's but the deal. You, you have to make some kind you of gotta, a statement. Yeah, you got to make yeah. a statement. Yeah. Now, you know, you got to, where all of a sudden the camera's on you. Yeah. And you're telling the head, you're, you're having a conversation. Hey. And that stops all this. It slows hey. everything down. Hey, wait a second. And then, and then you're telling the official, hey, look, we know the rules. I know you guys know the rules. That's a foul. And, and make him look yeah. at you and have a conversation yeah. so at least they don't spot the ball and say the game's over. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, he could say, it was Tony Corinthi, who was the head yeah. referee. Yeah. He he could say to you, Coach, my back judge decided he, he it wasn't a foul, and you you just have to say that was his judgment, and, and you'd have to let it go. Then, then I you guess. live with it. But, but I don't least, know that he would say that. Right, to you. At least it, you have to alert them that look, this is what I'm seeing. Yeah. Right now, and this is what they see up there. Mm -hmm. My coaches are telling me exactly what happened. Can we look at this? Are you sure? Are you positive you want to do this? Because obviously, under the rules, it's not reviewable yeah. because yeah. it's a judgment call. But they're looking. They're, they're looking. looking at it. Yeah. Some I mean, Dean Blandino, moments after the but game, is saying, we blew it. This, yeah. is, okay. this, is, this is the 12th man again showing up. Okay. That's the same oh, end zone of the failed Mary play. Right? <sighs> same end zone. Yeah. Bad out of so hell. Stephen A. Smith gets away with another one, <laughs> and, and <laughs> he's got <laughs> another <laughs> bogus hey, listen, team listen, going forward listen, at listen, two listen, and two. Listen. Say, say what you want. At the yeah. end of the day, you know, your arguments are, are valid to some degree, but yeah. there's plausible deniability. Yeah, <laughs> and as right. long as there's plausible yeah, deniability, right. we have to lean on the yeah. fact that the Seattle Seahawks are coming. By the way, Coach, they not are. to be political, yes. but I need to, to tell you this. Yes, sir. My name is Stephen A. Smith, <laughs> and I approve this message. Uh. Gotcha. <laughs> Detroit versus everybody. Fired up, Skip. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm. <laughs> really. It's nervous right now. Yeah. No, he's, not, he's angry. The last time Greg Hardy faced the Patriots, he sacked Tom Brady. Herm Edwards has a personal relationship with uh, Hardy there, and he's going to react to Hardy's return to the NFL in just a bit.